There's a lot of epoxy resins out there, but are they all good? Today, I bought the cheapest crystal clear resin on Amazon, and we're gonna put it to the test. A pretty nondescript box, and it came with a lot of really cool extras. Some of them, I really don't know what they do. Came with some empty resin vessels, and some hand protectors. And all the instructions are in this little booklet that I can lose. How convenient. And actually the instructions are really good and came with lots of really helpful tips. All right, so let's try this stuff out. We're going to use some mica powder. Definitely test how that interacts with the resin. And I'm looking for my tint. I know that I've got a bunch of smooth on tint. Basically every single color that you can imagine. Nope, that's plaster. Oh yeah, that's right. It's over there. No, no, it's not. It's on the second shelf, or at least it was. It's gotta be behind something, or maybe above. No, what the heck? I know I have it. Maybe it's up by the paint. No, it's not. Okay, whatever, we're not gonna tint it. Let's put on our hand protectors, always. And we'll pop the seal on the resin, just that little foil Seal. Wow, that is not just a foil seal. What in the... Ouch. Okay, so I guess you gotta cut these open. So they're not gonna spill in the mail, that's for sure. Thought I'd use the little measuring vessels that it came with. Stir it up in one direction like the instructions recommend. And I've got this mold that I use to test all my materials. The mic powder looks kind of cool. Here's my one inch cube. Now the directions say only to pour about half an inch at a time. I did a full inch just to see what would happen and it came out perfect, crystal clear. This is actually way more clear than I expected for something that I had never heard of. Look how easily they pop out of the mold. I did not use any mold release. They just pop right out, easy peasy. Now I was a little surprised that it bends. I did not expect that. Usually crystal clear resin that I've worked with is very brittle. I'm sure I could probably make it a little harder if I did some post curing, but there was no directions on how to post cure this resin. So I just left it as is at room temperature. So I did go out and get some other tint, since I misplaced my previous tint. And uh, all we gotta do is squirt a drop or two in there. Oh yeah, that's right, gotta cut it open, never been used. Okay, so all we gotta do is squirt a drop or two in there. Okay, I guess I gotta cut it some more. Yep, that did the trick, okay. Good thing I had those hand protectors. And we're gonna try some yellow too. I'm putting 10 drops of yellow just to see if I can make it more opaque. And the purple is really transparent, but it's definitely purple. 
And the yellow with 10 drops, I was actually surprised that it's not darker yellow. But you can see it actually is way darker than the purple. Okay, so let's encapsulate this penny in another one inch cube. So we're gonna suspend it with a tongue depressor and do half of it first, let it dry, and then do the other half. Make sure that we get it just right, and yep, if I just add a little dab of glue, we should be good. Perfect. All right, we're gonna mix up our resin. Oh, we're gonna measure twice, always measure twice. And yep, that's perfect. Oh, okay, that's not gonna work. Sometimes you just got to redo your efforts. A slight gust of wind is all we need to make this work. Ooh, I see bubbles. Uh-oh. What am I going to do about the bubbles? Oh, wait. I happen to have just the right thing pressure pot. So if we just shove it in there and pressurize it for the entire cure time, we should be good to go. The pressure pot will shrink those bubbles down to a size that you can't see with your own eye. Maybe with somebody else's eye you could see it. Robots could see it, that's for sure. Wow, this stuff is actually really, really clear. But I still see bubbles, even after pressurizing. Will it burn? So I'm actually curious to see, will this melt? Will it burn? Will it char or will it resist? It took a second to get it going, but it actually caught fire and continued to burn all by itself. So yes, this stuff is definitely flammable and it stinks. So now we're gonna buff up that cold casting and just see if we can get it to look like metal. This actually had copper dust in it, so if we buff it up, it should look like copper. Now for a durability test, I wanna see if it bends, breaks, how far you can bend it before it breaks, My guess was that it was going to snap right about here. I was shocked to see that it kept on bending. Like, I literally could not break it. That's pretty impressive. At this point, I'm thinking, I actually really like this epoxy resin. Let's give it a twist and see how far we can take it. It just kind of like tore almost like a gelatin. If you're liking this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe to see more. Thank you.
Now for a clarity test. I'm going to see which line I can read. And it looks like the number four. Now we're going to test the machine ability. Will it shatter? Or can we just drill right through it? Wow. This drills like butter. I've never drilled butter before, but I imagine this drills a lot like butter. But can it withstand my hammer? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hits of the hammer and no cracks or anything. This is some really cool stuff, but it's no match for my kid. If anyone can break this resin chip, it's my son. Trust me. Oh my gosh, look at that. He cracked it all the way through and it still didn't fall apart. Man, this stuff is actually kind of amazing. All right, let's get our table protector ready. Put our hand protectors on. We're gonna see if we can coat foam and coat wood. A lot of times crystal clear epoxy resin is used for coating bar tops or it could be used as a hard shell foam coating. So I'm going to see if this stuff works for those purposes. I want to spread it on as thin as I can and see if it's self-leveling and see if the bubbles take care of themselves. Now I do end up sanding this coat and putting a second coat on. So when you see the final product, that is two very, very thin coats. And the results are in. And here's the scorecard. So I'm giving the price a nine out of 10 because it is half the price as Smooth On's Crystal Clear series. I didn't give it a 10 because it wasn't on sale and it could have been maybe cheaper than half price, I think. I'm giving the instructions a nine out of 10 because they were very thoughtful and had all kinds of tips and tricks included. Um, but I docked it one point because it did not make it super clear. I had to really, really look uh, to see which part was part A and which part was part B. Not that it really mattered, but it did kind of look confusing at first. Durability, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 because it really held up to all the, the banging and burning and twisting and bending. Machinability, 10 out of 10. It was so easy to drill through. Fire resistance, five out of 10. It was okay. It took a little bit to get it started, but it did burn quite well. This resin earned a four on my clarity test because while I could see through it very well, um, I could not read past the fourth line, but also um, it did have a lot of distortion in the resin. And it got a seven out of 10 for being bubble free. Even after the pressure pot, there was still bubbles. They were pretty small and I could 
see how that could pass as as a product that you could sell on Etsy or something like that, but it did still have bubbles after the pressure pump. Now as for scoring the use cases, for casting, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. I didn't have to use mold release and it popped right out of the molds. Um, it, it filled in very, very well and it was uh, not very viscous at all. For coating, it was borderline great. It was an 8 out of 10 because it coated both the foam and the wood really, really well and it leveled out really well, um, but I still saw ripples. I saw uh, just one or two little bubbles that were in there, and uh, it, it just wasn't perfect. Encapsulation, I give it a seven out of 10. It did not form bubbles around the penny. It was super easy to work with, but there was still some bubbles and some distortion in the resin itself. For cold casting, I only give it a six out of 10 because even after buffing it, it looked really good, but it didn't look like metal. And for tinting, I gave it a seven out of 10, which is good because it took the color. It looked really good, uh, but it felt like it was hard to make it more opaque. So it would have taken like a lot of tint. My final verdict, would I buy Janchun Crystal Clear Epoxy again? Absolutely. I really hope you liked this video and found it useful in some way. If you did, give me a like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more of these material tests.